bracket, EG versus Clutch Gamers. That's Jack. That's that's God's over there. Mars TV. So what is Mars? Does it stand for something? Mars. M A R S. It's just uh, it's just Mars TV. So interestingly enough, this is a, this is a very minor trivia thing, but uh, they call themselves Mars Media now, and uh, I think all of the companies in China basically have to change that because in order to call themselves TV, they need uh, some kind of like official Planet. government sanction. Oh, okay. For that. <laughs> Oh, that 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 that, that too. <laughs> well, no, nobody has from Mars has so far come forth to contest that, so I think they're mm. okay. It just says nobody from Mars has come to defend themselves in this Mars TV Dota tournament. Um, but yeah, Mars Media. That's f I come on, you're not fooling anyone. They don't need to care about that kind of stuff. What was it? Uh, that Kentucky Fried Chicken place, but it's not KFC. What is it? That K ripoff we were giggling about. KFG. Where they KFG. <laughs> <laughs> There's a there's not a KFC out there, but there's a KFG, and uh, I don't know you. You look a little closely, and it might be quite similar yeah. here. We have a draft, gentlemen. This is our third attempt at the draft, so we'll see if it loads through. Looks like we're good, as a couple of bands are already flying out. But cool. Parker, what kind of adjustments would you like to see from Clutch Gamers? We felt pretty good about their draft in game number one. It was maybe the execution that didn't work out, but if there was something, you can kind of pull out from it. I want to see some true spirited SEA Dota. Ganking heroes run at you, win the lanes. That is SEA Dota at its best. That's the SEA Dota that has upset top tier Western teams in the past. It has upset a lot of top tier teams on the international stage. I think that's more what clutch gamers have to do. Okay, okay. Yeah. They get first pick here. We might see them just go right into the Sand King, but maybe run at you would be a Night Stalker early. Nah, they're going to go for the Sand King. Okay. So it's okay. I think you can work around that as a runner. You kind of draft. Boombex, perhaps one of his best heroes or best hero. Um, this It's stable. Like, you can't really, can't really say much more about it. Yeah, the Sand King. King. It's like, yeah, the Sand King. It's the old trusty. And we know what it does. We know what it doesn't do. Mm, there's that. I want to say it might be the most first-picked hero on this current patch, probably. Oh, yeah. I would. I would imagine so. And then here we Went go back again. To the Venomancer. I, wonder, yeah. I was wondering if they would take either this or the Drow in the uh, in the first two picks again since it's been left in the pool this time. But uh, there's the Venom again. And uh, once again, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. Yeah. They could they could go with it as you know as the RTZ safe laner again. But I wouldn't be totally surprised if they wanted to change things up a little bit. I would actually wager design. that EG would switch it up this EG time. Would switch it up I think that they're design. the kind of team that's not going to just do that again. They're just. I think that. I don't know. I'm just getting a hunch here that more than likely we'll see it in a different position in the different hands of someone else. Oracle. Fantastic. Love the hero. I'm excited to see it. Crit's going to be playing it. And uh, I don't know. That's dope. This hero does a lot of things. One of the issues that he does have is kind of mana problems. His spells are also good, and but they're very spammable and they're kind of cost intensive so that's one of the issues this hero's had um, one pairing that we've seen occasionally but not too much is with the od uh with the oracle oh if, i love that if you have so if you have the venomancer and the oracle with the od like again with like very frequent cast spells you basically would never worry about having mana issues with them as long as they're together and like you know in some kind of death ball and that makes the oracle yeah just but if you want death scarier. ball and you want oracle pairing you're looking at like death profit usually Maybe not EG, but uh, I do love that synergy with the OD. There's a lot of fun synergy out there with a lot of new yeah. meta picks. Let's say like CK, for example. Uh, typically, it could be a heart candidate. And heart has got those nice buffs recently where the HP regen, regen is quite ridiculous. So when you give them a false promise, they get double that. It feels like it's damn near impossible to take them down. I do like the option of clutch gamers. I don't know, maybe they run back and somehow squeeze in a faceless void. Time dilation is very good against someone like Oracle and even Venomancer who like to spam a lot. And you do need a way to be able to lock down and maybe even get a hold of a Oracle hiding in the back lines. But the Rubik you see picked a lot against these like kind of Omni type here. Omni, uh, in this case, Venomancer, you can steal his wards. Um, with the Oracle, like you end up taking his spells obviously as well. But Rubik, of course, with the benefit of having basically no cast delay. Uh, on the spells, no cast animation, animation on the spells. So he's a better version of some of these uh, other heroes that you have on the other team. And then, of course, uh, with the null field as well, is going to help against uh, yeah, the Venomancer. Yeah, it's just value. Yeah. That is value town for sure. Second phase. They'll still ban the drow. Yeah, they get yeah. rid of that drow again. Cool. Then it could be run in as an offlane or a mid. So there is that flexibility. Support, of course, too, but I yeah. think it's less likely a support with an oracle. 
Um, I think Venno's better as a five than a four. I mean, he's fine in the jungle. Jack can, Jack can attest to that, but uh, um, you haven't got any stuns between your supports, no initiation. I feel like you've got some big gaps in your lineup if you do run that four position Venno. Oracle with, with Drow in the game is just so great, too. That would be just his yeah. bat. Oh, it's it's so it's amazing, ridiculous. Yeah. Just throwing that tiny ass ball at you nonstop so fast. And if you give him the bonus damage on top of it, he can almost zone anybody out. It feels like. Yeah, I wonder if they'd go for like a conk, or if they they get a core here, maybe, or if I uh, go for a conk or something. We've seen Zai play a lot. There's kind of like a like a, the counter initiation component to it as well that you've seen from a lot of uh, EG picks where they have these like self sufficient laners, and then there's counter initiation for them. It's kind of like a two protect three sometimes. Yep. It feels like so. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like that here. Let's just scan my Dota buff, see some of the recent drafts, and there is Venomance, so yeah. the, la the latest article. <laughs> Venom. <laughs> There's an article directly on this one hero. How many one times have you fapped it out there, Jack? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I must admit, I have read the article. <laughs> I wrote I the article. Quite the article is about me. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Dota buff feels like the go-to Dota site these days. Other than like Reddit, I feel like. But like as yeah. far as like like specifically Dota numbers and stats go and content goes, it seems like a it's a cool website if you guys don't don't already frequent it. If you're a Dota you know enthusiast and you don't know Dota buff, you're just yeah. doing it wrong. That's for sure. I'll go like months maybe without going there, and then I'll just suddenly go in there one day and just go through like all these like nitty gritty stats about like my pub games and just waste like hours like figuring oh. out which hero I'm best on on radiant side playing as a jungler or something. Like, very odd specific stats. It's it's pretty cool. Here we go, second phase for the evil geniuses. And it's a void. He does come out, but it's going to be on their team. And we are in store for the universe faceless void. One of the greatest universe faceless or faceless voids in yep. the game. Sahil's He's awesome on the hero. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> as far as player hero combo goes, it's one of the best out there. He's above 75% win rate with this. Yeah. So in the house, tweeting out some stats, he's one of the best as far as player hero combo so goes, considering the number of times he's played it. Yeah. Universe... IX Mike than everyone else, you know, as far as Faceless Void goes. <laughs> <laughs> IX Mike has a Void? I think, yeah, he was, a he was a pioneer in one of the original what? offline Voids back in the day, NEL days. Okay. So, um, but, I'm going to uh, have to... He's just, he's just p back pocketing it for now. Is, is all it I'm, is. Not, I'm not sold on the, the Mike, Mike Void, I'm going to be honest. We'll see. Next Dakota. time he's on main stage, he'll show you. He'll show okay. you. But uh, just a solid grab for them. Maybe even a minor deny pick, who knows. But You told me, like, IX Mike Crystal Maiden. Like, that's an IX Mike here. <sighs> He's got his, his own set, you know. They're, those player sets are a, a rarity nowadays. Dude, I have and I use the IX Mike Crystal Maiden set. You don't have to tell me. Yeah. It's on there. It's you can look now. And it work, It works wonderfully with that new Immortal, by the way. So, I mean, it's Valve have to any new CM Immortal <laughs> say they, they want to build. you got to build yeah. that around the IX Mike like, set. <laughs> we could do it in this slot, but Mike is already there. <laughs> and uh, it's not going to work, so yeah. we'll go elsewhere. <laughs> Man, Clutch are thinking about this pick here. I wonder if they. If, I don't know if I don't recall if Clutch has recently played something like the the anti mage, um, something like a weaver. Like if if these are heroes that are seen as kind of good against the Venomancer core, um, and puts puts some pressure as well. Like Oracle may not be the best uh, support for uh, for dealing with those heroes, so that's a possibility. I'm not sure if they plan on picking up one of those cores here. Mm. So. Um, I wonder if the Void might have been kind of an answer to that as well. Um, if it's like a greedier core, if it's something that uh, can't really zone him out necessarily with these supports, and the Void will have a good time uh, if, he, if he is in the offline like we think he's going to be there. Good clockwork for now. I think it's good against the Oracle, but overall against those core heroes, kind of a tough clockwork game. Typically, the Venos against the clock will just rush a four staff, Void, time walks out. Um, I feel like this is more comfort pick for clutch gamers than anything, and obviously saying that they say can punish the support, but you don't want to be picking an offline just to counter one support. It's a shame. Uh, Silencer looks pretty tasty on clutch gamers' right. side, but is, I don't is know. That the, can... Is that the headband you were talking about? You got the oh, front of you. It does. Is that it? It's blue, right? It, it looks blue looks like here. MG. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, you know, maybe not. Maybe something else, but. He looks like a badass. Yeah. Is that facial hair? Oh my god. How long has it been since we've seen Sumo play in Dota? It's crazy. He, the uh, boy is he, growing up right before our eyes, man. He had it he had it last he had it uh, I think in Manila and then like he got I don't know if he got rid of it the last day or like or last few days of the tournament. He definitely had it yep. going at some point. Like not on the sides, but 
but uh, that was like the kind of patchy wolf. Yeah, thing I mean, you got to go through that phase. Everyone's gonna make, everyone's gonna shit on you. Just the players, they're they're superstitious about it too. Anytime you talk to Artizi about, it, he'll be like, "Yeah, I, I shaved for this event. We did really well. So next time, I'm like, and then he did badly with like his full on beard. So he's like, "Nah, man, when I'm playing Ti, I'm, I'm gonna be full full shave." So. Like, they they remember how well they do based on their facial hair. <laughs> yeah, I recall asking him about that, and it's like, are you doing, like, a playoff beard or, or something like that? Is that what's going on? So there is the Weaver coming out uh, from Clutch Gamers. And before that, the Night Stalker there. So you are you got a lot of heavy initiation on Clutch Gamers' side with your Sand King, with your Clockwork even, and Night Stalker's there to kind of make sure they have a hard time getting the vision necessary to make those kind of jump in plays. And you also get to have the convenient silence for even the Weaver that yeah. shows up too. So still pretty nice for EG overall. But yeah, I was also thinking about the Weaver too for Clutch. I think that's one of the better core options you can go for that's elusive and can deal out some good bursty damage maybe even later on to eliminate an Oracle or at least force the Oracle to have to use False Promise on himself. So yep. that'd be nice. And I think I think that may be why they spent uh, kind of like this much time on, on that Void pick. They are kind of already looking at what the cores that Clutch might pick up to deal with or counter this Venomancer, and they felt that you know Void is probably a good answer to many of them. They have yeah. Void and Night Soaker for the, the Weaver, so I feel like yeah, they have got game. tools to deal with the Weaver. Uh, they haven't got good damage for the Chrono, so I think that last pick for Sumel is likely to provide some of that. Um, it's been a while since we've seen that Sumel Invoker, but it was a hero that he used to play quite frequently. So maybe something he kind of considers, but... I don't know, this event, I feel like he is... I'm just getting a hunch that he is getting to dictate what he wants to play <laughs> in every yeah. draft. I, I think so, for sure. I don't oh. know if they're just like... Is it, is it the mid-AA? Oh. oh! Whoa, whoa. Okay, well, I did like EG a lot, but, you know, then this guy comes out and... <laughs> Dude, is Sumail ah. deciding he wanted to play this pick? I don't know. He's got plus five starting agility now. And he might play just the Ags build. Like, who knows? He might troll around with it. Look at look at his lineup. All these boys here would love an Ags. Yeah. Even Oracle. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so, oh, uh, I mean, I'm not a big it's fan. He's got some he, small buffs. Yeah, he got the buffs, though. It's one of those things where you're not going to know how good this hero is with those buffs until you play in a competitive match. I think EG's like, we're up 1-0 against Clutch Gamers. We have a game to play around with. Let's try out one of these newly buffed heroes and see how it Please works. don't go well. Please do go well, because if Alchemist looks so good, you know we're going to be in store for a lot of Alchemist games. So, yeah, I like you, EG, but if Alk looks really weak and maybe all the other teams are like, ah, he looks like shit, we won't play him, <laughs> then we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of game that all the teams are going to be watching. Yeah, like, they're like, oh, is Alchemist yeah. good? Probably a lot of, I mean, some teams out there like, oh, yeah, EG playing clutch, heavy favorites, maybe not a lot to learn from this series because EG should 2-0 them, but then they see this Alchemist, they're like, ooh. Is, I mean, it's all, I you feel like that's what happened with the CK earlier, you know? Yeah. It's just like we see it in the hands of a couple of teams, busting it out, and suddenly it's uh, spread like wildfire. Hope that doesn't happen with Alchemist, but that's just me. I'm very biased against Alchemist. Maybe some of you Alki fans out there, the dozens of you, um, you know, get excited. Some Chinese teams used to run Alk in more of the uh, kind of feeding capacity of the item sharing. I mean, not the actual feeding that Dakota was talking about, <laughs> giving the Ags. And yeah, he's got pretty good Ags recipients here because it's something that you want, for instance, on the Night Stalker, but that hero maybe takes more time to get that farm up if he doesn't have a good start. Um, same with the Faceless Void. Like, you see most offlane voids, they don't really want to be farming in Aghanims until they're, like, third or fourth item. And so if you can get that at a quick timing, like, just enables him that much more, reducing that cooldown on the Chronosphere. So... If they do choose to go that direction, that's interesting. But also, like, there's kind of a lack of, of real burst damage on the side of Clutch. It's, like, mostly pretty sustain-based. And Alchemist tends to do well against that. Oh, he's, he's going to cut through the, the trees yeah. and try to make it. But Sumail is fast. He is going to look to dodge here. He hides through the trees. You know, Clutch Gamer is pretty heavy in with this five-man first blood attempt. It looks like they will be able to get the upper hand onto Sumail. They catch him, and they will be able to bring him down. Trying to take him away from that early bounty rune. Leave the kill for Amel. Nicely done. He may still get a bounty rune, though. He respawns still with 10 seconds to go. He's pinging top. top. Yeah, it will TP there. But interesting. He, he kind of ran south. I think once he committed to running to the right side, he couldn't run towards his tower because he ran directly down. And Sanking had boots. So Sanking was going to eventually catch up to him. So he kind of felt like he had to juke in the trees. But good aggression from Clutch Gamers to snag at least... Well, they don't stop him getting a bounty rune, but they may manage to get that first blood. And yeah, that's pretty much what they get from it, is yeah. the, the first blood. So they get a boost. He, he still gets a nice amount of gold from it. And uh, actually, because the Clutch Gamer's not in a position to really block their lanes optimally, that might end up uh, skewing <laughs> the lanes in EG's favor. So 
You know, not too bad of a trade-off, I guess, for giving up the first blood. Yeah. yeah, considering he still gets a bounty rune, Universe got his bounty rune top. I feel like Universe may just crush this lane. Uh, he's fantastic in these 1v1s often, knows him very well, and that is a concern for, for clutch gamers. It looks like Zai is going to be kind of the enforcer for this Ooh, mid lane bottom. now. But bottom lane, Artesi. that means that they can make their move in. For Arteezy here, as mentioned, the stun, the telekinesis pullback. And with the bugs, it's all more than enough to be able to get a now second kill for Clutch. Yeah, it's a great move from Boombax through the trees, gets him from the side. Venno loves to be up against kind of these traditional one hero type of offlaners. He does not necessarily like to be tri uh, which which would force the supports to be there as well, because he likes to get up those levels and experience. It's very important to him in terms of the wards and poison stings. So um, they could either send Night Soccer down here and try to brawl a little bit, or they consider relocating Arteezy. That's the plan for now. You know, Arteezy hasn't even skilled anything yet, because there's none of your spells are actually useful against a tri -lane. I mean, the Gale is uh, probably the most useful, but uh, he's kind of like, well, I don't really... We're not really going aggressive, we're playing defensive, and your spells as a Venno aren't good defensively except the wards, but only wards once they're level 2, level 3. So for now, he's just going to be like, well, I'm just going to chill. And Zai's kind of almost forced to be just stuck nearby. He'll float around for the bounty rune right now, but it'd be nice for Crit to be able to try to get some good XP on the side. Once you get to level 3 and you get 2 points in the Purifying Flames, you could do some surprisingly good burst damage uh, with the Fortune Zen pairing, so... But we'll see if he gets that kind of opportunity or not. As long as Clutch Gamers are keeping this pretty heavy on the aggro side of things, he might not get that opportunity. But as I say that, they all step off. In fact, it does look like Zai's trying to go in for a snipe of the bounty rune, but gets there just a bit too late. Oh, oh into the root creeps. That's going to be actually a decent amount of damage. <laughs> He actually got, it almost feels like a little lucky there. I feel like when I cross in front of those creeps, I don't know, they they hate me. They're just like, get the hell off my doorstep. They hit me with the root. They hit me with everything they got. Those dreaded prowlers. One of the best ones uh, back in, this is turning back the clock, but in Warcraft 3, there was those like purge creeps. They just come oh out and my just purge God. you. And, and drain your mana too. <laughs> those, are, those are just brutal to walk past. So yeah. Snails just roaming around picking up bounty runes. I'm just enjoying watching him. He goes to the top one. When you have these 1v1s in the offlane, neither offlaner really wants to leave to pick up bounties unless they get an early bottle to refill it. So he has free access to get double bounty runes and then come back mid. He pushes out the lane with acid. He returns. Fairly, I mean, it's kind of efficient. At the same time, he is missing some CS while this goes on, but those bounty runes give him more gold than he'd otherwise be finding. And he returns back to the mid lane with uh, you know pretty even neck and neck CS game there. You were already mentioning how Universe was going to be getting a lot in his lane, and it does look like that is the case. 15 and 1 CS for him, but it is a win win clockwork, and this kind of a matchup is also getting a lot. We're seeing some simultaneous breakouts here. Armel harassing Sumail quite a bit, while top lane trades with the battery assault. Universe gets a time lock hit there, so it's. Quite a bit of damage on the wrapping is going to force out the salve while bottom lane heavy moves under Arteezy. We catch the back end of that one. It is CG coming up successful once again. I like this. CG have reacted to the Venom problem from game one. I like, we're going to actually address this here since we had no answer for it once he got farmed. Let's stop him getting farmed. Let's put him on the back foot and play from there. So already we see a, a much clearer response coming out from the CG camp. Nighttime now. Zai is level 2, very fresh level 2, so not the uh, best side of the XP as far as where you'd like to be, but we'll see if they can find any sort of setups with it or any sort of potential plays. He's for now kind of heading cross country here, and we'll get some of that time to farm as two males once again doing the, uh, you know, the loop to dupe here, grabbing some bounties and some yep. jungle farm. Oh, missed that acid. That acid AoE. Uh-oh. <laughs> he pulls him in, but initially it didn't actually draw aggro, it looked like. But Ooh, another setup possibly onto the bottom lane here. Can they get our tour down yet again? There's the telekinesis. They throw him right back in towards Gabby. There's the burrow strike. And that should do it. Walk him on back. He'll try to get some wards down or something. But now he is 0-3. This aggro lane from CG is proven to be quite rewarding. Yeah. The wins for EG is mostly the mid lane where Alchemist has not been ganked at all. He's kind of free farming. He's fallen back in the jungle as well. He missed that stack, so a bit of efficiency lost. But he is maxing that Grievel's Greed, not even getting that third point in Acid. So he's going full on gold farming mode. And also giving that lane in the mid to, to Zai from time to time when he does venture back into that jungle.
definitely feels very passive. Very, very, uh more on the uh, economy side of things for EG. They understand that they are going to be taking some losses, especially in that bottom lane, but like you were talking about, Sumail's getting a lot, Universe is getting a lot, and, uh, you know, they're not going to be maybe proactive at all in this nighttime, but Zai did get a bit of time there to farm up. So he's getting closer to level 3, but... Oh, is he crossing past with the Sand King as he tries to rotate through the mid lane? Yes, he will spot him out. I don't know how much kill potential they have between him and Sumail, especially when Sumail's already this low, but... They will avoid this potential gank. Oh, oh Zai won't. Nice. <laughs> He's done for. He does get caught with the telekinesis, with the burrow, and with the soul siphon. That is going to do it. Smells like, I'm out. This bounty rune's to pick up. Yep. See you later, guys. <laughs> There's money to be grabbed. Yeah. Let's say gets the Iron Talon. I was, I was wondering if he was I feel like he maybe should have got that earlier, but he knows he's going to spend probably as more time in the jungle than he will in the actual lane, but... Already see a response. Fly solo. Oh, he wards, but instant D ward from Zai. Good heads up play there. And even gives the ward to some mail. What a bro. More money to be made by the money man. One thing that's going to be interesting to watch out for is uh, how quickly can Armel take this mid tower um, if Sumail opts to retreat into the woods. And uh, let's say Artesian is, is in a position to come help. They take down that tower, and then once these towers fall, um, it's going to be a lot harder for EG to farm the jungle. This is a problem that Radiant seems to have quite frequently, which is both protecting their jungle um, because of the spacing of the camps and being able to stack their jungle effectively uh, with the Ancients and the distance from the other camps. So that is something that uh, obviously EG is going to want to utilize with the Alchemist, um, whereas you know CG is not really built in their lineup to take advantage of jungle uh, at all by contrast. So that's going to be something to watch out for. There's a lot of vision uh, from Clutch and a lot of mobility, and so if EG loses control of that jungle, it could be a tough game for them. Perhaps more the Venom's job to defend those towers too, because well, losing your towers is where you lose control of the jungle. They need to try and stop that Death Prophet from taking early towers. The hero to do that isn't so much the Alchemist, but the, the Venno teeping in with Plague Wards to just set up camp and defend those. It's very hard to push into level 4 Plague Wards in that early stages of the game. Yeah, that's a good point. And that may be why they keep bringing him back to lane, even though he's been killed a few times, because he is going to get more experience. He is able to stop the wave there. Instead of just transitioning him to the jungle and telling him to go uh, farm that, he's still getting lane XP and keeping the wave off the tower, at least for now. The tower is still in pristine condition. No points in Gale, very much clearly going for a full-on Plague Ward build, that he'd normally get that Gale for some kill potential. They're playing defensively. Nighttime concludes as there is a bit of a tussle over the bounty rune. It's going to be Clutch who lose their Sand King in that ordeal. Zai's going to be able to walk himself into a regen rune and back to full health. Very convenient for him. Void makes the first move before Clockwork does. It's kind of the unexpected result there. Normally you think, okay, those heroes hit level 6. Clock is typically the one more interesting ganking. Yeah, but Clock's of her, uh, Clock rather, is the first one to get the ulti off into that mid lane. Finds connection onto Sumail. Tries to cog him down, but... They'll have to settle for Zai, it looks like, instead. Yeah. Very easily escaped there. As long as, as long as he had Chemical Rage up, I guess Clock was banking on it being down. Just breaks his way out of Cogs, runs away. I don't think Nightstalker even saves him there. I think that was just Zai thinking he needed to save him when really Sumail was A-OK. -okay. But this mid-tower is the key objective. And I think Death Prophet... Oh, no mana. I was about to say, earlier on he hadn't skilled up the ultimate. This time it's just, yeah, he's actually a bit out of mana, so... We'll see if they can defend this one or not. Venno has rotated top, so it looks like this tower is done for. And yeah, there the exorcism will come out. As the tower is already falling, so I wonder if they're going to keep this party moving forward or try to pull it back into maybe some extra farm for the DP. Looks like the latter here. So as they settle for that, EG goes for their own trade bashing in towards this top tier one tower. Their kill, kill potential is getting pretty nice now, obviously with the Chrono being online. Poison Nova is there. Uh, but, but they might decide to just wait things out until maybe the next nightfall. Yeah, EG's stabilized the lanes with Venno catching up. He's not going to get the Great Veil timing we saw last game, but he's still getting pretty good. Universe is recognizing that he hit the 1v1 lane. He's farming well. He's going to go for a carry build. Treads, Mask of Madness. Good hop over the trees here from Rappi. Gets the jump. Central Chrono. On to Arteezy. Uh, Universe waits a bit. And they catch him with the telekinesis. He'll pull out the time walk now to be able to make it away. No point in silence there for Armel at level 9. That's a very likely a kill onto... Oh, bottom well. lane. Zai getting in on some action. Gabby's able to get the jump onto crit, but it does cost him his own life. So That's not worth Not worth it all. Suddenly Zai's level 5. He was looking kind of underleveled before that. 
But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of don't mind the no silence because he'd been no mana for, for so long. I think he found a regen rune or shrined up, but he, he was often having mana problems, but definitely a scenario where having that one value point could have gotten a kill. As it stands, EG are going to be kind of playing the passive game. They're going to look to farm. It's up to Clutch Gamers. The onus is on them to get shit done. Okay, Zyde might be uh, the one that gets shit on, if you will. Here come the bugs. They start to clamp in, and that is when they make their move. Zai is going to be handled just uh, a minute before the nighttime comes once again. So as he returns, expect him to TP in the lane and get back to action. But hey, Clutch Gamer is successful on their little gate move and might decide to turn this into some pressure onto a tier one. Got to get those plus ones underway. The key thing for Clutch for me is using Xism every time it's up. Not just, a lot of times you'll have ultimates and you're happy to hold them and it's like the, like Enigma Black Hole. Like maybe you want to use it for a solo kill, but you're kind of happy just to continue farming and play a farm game with an Enigma and not use Black Hole. This game against an Alchemist with Death Prophet, you need to use that Exorcism almost immediately it's up. Go and push a lane, go and smoke up, go and do something. If they're farming, they're going to lose to the Alchemist. He's already 8k net, w net worth, almost 2500 ahead of the Death Prophet. Did I say Zai was going to die, TP back and get an action? I meant die, come back, <laughs> TP and die. But he does not go down totally in vain. It does look yeah. like Universe is able to use the Chrono and get a little bit of revenge taking out the Rubik. But we're not done there yet. It looks like he's going to sweep in and get a hold of that 12 minute room, and he is. Snags it right under the nose of Sumail. And he grabs an arcane rune too. Mm, yummy. Not bad. The, the Night Stalker's game, uh, the, the Zion Night Stalker, has felt like just kind of the sacrificial lamb, but like it feels almost feels bad to kill him. Uh, <laughs> your clutch, right? You're it's killing like, the wrong hero. Yeah, he's like he's kind of like the poison pill. Like, all right, we'll settle for the Night Stalker. You know, it'll take us a little bit because he still is a Night Stalker, but we won't get a core out of it, and then we'll have to go back or reset our spells, and we can't keep fighting afterwards. Like, uh, you see Zai in this kind of position quite a bit, I think. Uh, didn't he say, uh, one of the tournaments was like, you know, the time for fun is past, it's time for winning right now, and he was yeah. playing these kind of heroes maybe. Oh, I think that was, uh, Crit more. That's Crit. Because Crit's playing the five. I think he's, because he used to play four and move to five. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would make but sense, too, yeah. I kind of sworn it was, well, yeah, Might like, have been one Zai. of them definitely yeah, yeah. saying that. I think, I think it was Zai, actually, I don't recall exactly okay. when, but, uh, yeah, like, he often dies together with Crit to like make space for the laners and for the for the cores and yep. kind of feels like that this game. It doesn't feel bad that with these Night Stalker deaths, you know, they all seem pretty productive. That could apply to both of them. Both of them actually <laughs> played four at some point. You know, Zai was on it before with PPD and stuff. So here's Zai, the man. Could be in a bit of trouble. He has nighttime now to try to juke things yeah, out. Whoa, well. nice well. sidestep, avoids the hook shot, okay. but he does go down well, regardless. That's a, that's a fast blink. That's a four position sand king with a blink. 13 minutes in. And clutch gamers, I mean, talk about them having to to make plays and do stuff. They've got the tools to do it with. Exorcism, blink on sanking this early makes a big difference for them. Smell is going to have a good timing on Radiance, but the question is how much damage can clutch gamers do before that comes up? And even while the Radiance is there, Alchemist really kind of hits his stride with a couple more items on top uh -oh. of the Radiance. Crit has been spotted. Look at this play coming in from Clutch as they make a heavy push in the top lane. Two of them rotate themselves down towards the shine. They cross paths with Crit, who's going to be committing the False Promise on himself. Can they move it forward to get the finish on the Boombox? Yes, they will. Crit might, might die here. It looks like he will, getting too much damage there from Rappi. Meanwhile, Sumail getting a double kill, gets off the finish while Universe sets up that Chrono and gets the takedown of Clockwork. That's a big fight. Armel sticks out the top lane, doesn't TP in. Not sure if he had it up or not, but... Ultimately, the, the trade for EG there was really good. I, it looked like a scenario where you're just going to leave the Oracle to die. He ran into Ward. He gets TP'd on. He's 100% dead, but EG decide to use it to set up a big team fight. They have all their ultimates, the Poison Nova, the Chrono. Alchemist was deciding that he was ready to fight as well. Had at least a couple points in his stun, so EG get a very favorable outcome as a result. Yes. Alchemist is huge now. 11k, he yeah. has that radiance done with the armlet. It's pretty gross. And if you have the elk factor, so if they do manage to take him down, it's, it's a big bounty for him, but yeah, he's so big. They just don't have good heroes to burst elk too. Like a farmed elk you can maybe deal with if you've got like bursty heroes who can just not, can kill him fast before the chemical rage regen kicks in. But Death Prophet's kind of slowish with the spirit siphon. The X is not bad. Sand King's probably the only hero that, have that has some burst with epicenter. Um, but the rest of the lineup, Weaver is very bad against Alchemist, I'd say. 
You really want like the Leaners, the Ursas. These kind of heroes are what you want to get against out. Jump on him, bring him down. He doesn't get a chance to regen up from the Chemical Rage. Yeah, they just they don't really have the the burst. And then uh, looking at some of the itemizations, so uh, Gabby on the Weaver has decided to go for the Lincolns this game. Uh, first item, I, I, I'm not sure if I agree with with this choice uh, as far as this game situation because well, there's there's a couple tools for being able to take off the Lincolns or like you're not protected say against time dilation or something from Void. But also like a lot of times when you go for that Weaver, that Lincolns early on the Weaver, it feels like it slows you down a little bit too much. This is a hero that needs offensive and defensive items. So we see Universe going on to uh, Solo in the middle. Him and Zai tag team and get the takedown of the Rubik, but Rappy jumps into action now between him and Boombox. They're looking to get a little bit of redemption here, but Universe able to time walk to the high ground oh. and does TP right under their nose and out from trouble. Zai will take to the skies, fly up and away, and he's out of there. It was mid battery assault. It looked like it hit the Night Stalker instead. Zai playing that selfless support. They have yeah, spotted Sumail though, who is farming deep. Again, has that monster bounty over his head. They're going to commit with the epicenter, and they will be able to bring down the beast. That's the kill you need. I need probably a few more times at this game. He did buy his boots of travel, so it looked like he didn't lose too much. I think he was trying to, he picked them up and was trying to TP out and then got caught. Oh man, Gabby is making chase for Crit. Crit has the Fate Seed at Purifying Flames to try to heal himself up. We'll be able to make it away. Could have gone two ways about that. Could even Fate Seed the Weaver so he can't right click, but either way, gets out from trouble. Oh, Void with a Shadow Blade already. Universe is very farmed. I mean, he's number four in net worth, and you see Alchemist, and you see Void, and you're like, ah, oh, this Void isn't really that farm, but considering Universe's role in this team, this is a fantastic spot team to be in, and these items are great at punishing this Weaver. He can kind of Shadow Blade in, scout around, find the Weaver, or even find, like, a Sanking. I think Sanking is probably one of the bigger value kills mm -hmm. you can get, because without Sanking, you lose that big guaranteed instant initiation. You've still got the clock, but I think Sanking is kind of the scary of the two for the Alchemist to have to deal with. Looks like a call to action here from EG. They gather up just to their mid-tier two and roll on out here. We got a Chrono, everything up at the ready. They go towards the mid lane just as Clutch Gamers come together. It looks like they're going to go for their own call to action, but they don't smoke up. They're going to show Death Prophet in the lane. Will this turn into a convenient bait? No. EG have actually headed into the Roche pit and begin to fight it out there. Armel's like, mm, Arcane Rune. Wait, what's happening in there? Oh, it's a Roche fight. Oh, Chrono comes out from Universe, only able to catch the Clockwork back in behind. Aegis is going to get snagged up from Sumail on this one. They're battling it out. They are going to get the finish onto the Venomancer here. But they're looking for more. Sumail's going to get hit up with a False Promise. It will end up working its way through the ages here. Armel hanging on with that Soul Siphon, but can't live it out to the end of the Exorcism. They are going to get the finish. Gabby cleans up Universe here. It's Sumail, the lone survivor for EG. He's now going to be beating down the bug. Can he get the finish onto He's Gabby with the poison? Radiance Burn? The poison's there. He needs just a bit more. Can he run up enough? No. Gabby's going to be able to Sakuchi away. And Flysoul also will survive. It is an absolute bloodbath in the Roche pit. This is a tight fight. Leave yeah, Alk did so much damage. The Venomax didn't do as much as I thought, despite getting off the ultimate. EG make a sneaky move there. Very heads up play from Clutch Game to Sexy Breed. I, I honestly thought they were just weren't going to predict that one because EG smoke in, they kill it very quickly, but very smart play by Armel to just throw a quick. Cripsome in there and figure out what was going on. Now Clutcher back to the grind of farm for now. Gabby kind of attending to the bottom lane for just a little bit here, but uh, he's going to be moving his way forward into a defusal, it looks like. So damage is going to be coming together a bit better, and he also has the BKB queued up right behind that, too. So. I feel like you can't feel too great about that fight, though, as Clutch. I mean, for one thing, you only get one more kill on your opponent, so you do break the Aegis right away, but it's an exorcism used not to take objectives. Um, and Alchemist doesn't die. He's the key hero. He stays alive. He gets a lot of kills. Mm -hmm. It slows you down where you don't have exorcism for a little while, and Alchemist continue to farm. So it just gets Alk more and more money to play around. So I think this game continues to look pretty scary for them, despite that fight. I didn't even notice, yeah, he's got that new bubbly radiance cosmetic look. Kind of 
Kind of funny looking here. Sumail will split pressure his way through this top lane. The rest of Clutch all down this mid lane. Going to be starting to knock their way down this tier two. It looks like we've got a nice DD rune here on Gabby. And now the Exorcism also coming out. No contention at all here from EG. Just kind of prepped just in case Clutch continue this push on forward. But they are going to be splitting the pressure elsewhere, it looks like, in the meantime. Yep. Lies there just to try and scout, make sure that Universe is protected. Universe is going to shut a blade in from the shrine, looking for a pick. And he may actually find it at the Ancients. Gabby's still there. He moves in, hits him once, then commits him with a chrono, and now uses the Mask of Madness. Can he burst him alone? Clockwork dives for himself right into the chrono, but there's just not enough damage. Gabby will be able to make it away. Zai tries to get the follow-up, but can't get it. Yeah, a bit. A bit unfortunate, very close. Universe hoping for, like, maybe a bash towards the end of the chrono, and he could get that kill if he kind of got that extra bit of stun duration. Didn't find it. He tried to play his fish if possible. He even got that yep. one first smack in <laughs> before the chrono yeah. just to get the most damage out of it as possible. Yep. But and what Rap he's actually Rap what Rappy's doing with that hookshot, you can actually s get that stun off on the void. You don't like actually physically go to him, but oh. it still stuns him in okay, chrono. Okay, yeah. At least that's how it used to work. I assume it still works that way. So he wasn't like he didn't just like waste his hookshot there. But yeah. he he missed it. He hit his teammate instead because void kind of dodged it. It looked like no, but that makes sense. That could stop like. One to two right clicks. Yeah, exactly. Damage there. Prevent some damage output, help time lapse come off. EG rolling down deep through this top lane. You know they're doing it without the chrono, but they're still looking for a fight. They're looking for a tier two. They got the darkness and the vision to kind of get the upper hand, but now Death Prophet into action. No exorcism. Starts things off early onto Sumail, but Sumail pops the ulti and begins to run back. Or EG going to totally withdraw from this one? Looks like it. I guess what they wanted to get out of that was, you know, Clutch Gamers at full attendance in the top lane. So, see where things go from here. EG just happy to keep farming. Sumail isn't quite at that full Alchemist level yet. They've got a lot of Ags they can pull. Who gets the first Ags, Jack? Where are you looking? Mm. I, I think maybe the, well... The Night Stalker is nowhere near it, so if they value Vision, I think that's that's a pretty good choice at this point. If not, I'd, I'd just go straight for the Venomancer. Uh, truthfully, he doesn't need to farm it himself. He's a little bit behind, and so that gives him some more tankiness and survivability. Uh, he does go for the XP gain talent, so once he gets to 18, that becomes a 60 second cooldown, which is a ton of damage. And also, CG, not the most durable of uh, heroes in the lineup, and so uh, a buffed Gale is going to, uh, buffed rather Poison Nova is going to be pretty strong against them. Yeah, no one has pipe complete. I saw a hood, but uh, no pipe either. We'll have null field later on. Currently, no value point. Never personally a fan of these Rubik builds where you go 4 4 0. Okay, move in from Rappi as oh, Zai's making the jump fly solo, but yeah, Universe gets a good two man connection. The Poison Nova follow up makes the connection onto three. Chrono was stolen. They get the lockdown onto two as Gabby tries to put to work in onto Arteezy. Can they heal him through the damage? It looks like he's going to be fine. This fight belonging to EG here. Fly Solo finds an opportunity to TP out. He'll be good, but they take three hard shots. They will lose their death profit as EG make a successful jump in. Oh, that's such a sick corona. Finding the Sanking, and he even prioritizes the Sanking kill over everything else. I don't know if he had vision. I mean, Sanking was in fog in the trees. Maybe they'd scouted him with like a Plague Ward or something, but or like a Night Stalker, perhaps with his Hunter in the Night flying vision, but. Either way, making sure you just take the either gamble with it or you saw him and you make sure you catch him. Killing that Sanking is a, a key factor for that fight. Yeah, that Octarine is getting close to completion here for Sumail. And uh, then you're at your own personal little critical mass. Disgusting alchemist. Oh, yeah. Probably see a Shiva's God after that. You definitely need an armor item against the Weaver and Death Prophet ultimate. Oh, crit just slaughtered there. Really not much you can do. Uh, he has the Purge and also uh, a Lincoln Sphere. So This game's still really tough for EG. They, yeah. they have a lineup that doesn't have any room for errors uh, because you lose a fight and then suddenly Death Prophet's on your high ground, breaking it with Exorcism. If you use ultimates and don't get kills, then this happens. You actually don't have Chronosphere for 30 seconds. Ooh, Meanwhile, nice Armel has all. Yeah, they caught Sumail here. We're on the other side of the wall with a good jump in. Can't quite get the finish, though. He's able to step off. Still has 20 seconds before the yes. ulti will be able to kick in, and Clutch Gamers have already 180 themselves out from the base. 
Fortunately, they commit for the kills and take a lot of damage. If they maybe just focused on sieging there, they could have at least gotten that tower down to half HP or something, but they saw an opportunity. You kill Sumail there, you force a buyback, or you perhaps just break up in the game and take that tier 3, maybe get racks, or at least get some shrines after that. I think for Clutch, it's all about playing around the cooldowns. That Chronosphere, when it's down, you suddenly find yourself in a very strong position. If you've got Exum and they don't have Chrono, you're looking good. I was going to say now, EG have the options here. They could take things a bit more passively and just wait out for the Roche, take that, then move forward, or just take it right to Clutch Gamers. They don't have that exorcism anymore. So it looks like they want to see if they can pressure through this top lane a bit, but Clutch are nowhere to be found. Already pushing out this bottom lane a bit and otherwise imploring their buddy-buddy system. Yep. But EG are going to be able to wait things till that row shit looks like. What's the timer? It's a short one. Just about 40 seconds or so. Yep, 40. Almost right on the button there. Good timing for them. Maybe get a tier 2 plus that. Mm. See where... You should go from here. This Alk is kind of that point where that low, lower cooldown chemical rage, much higher uptime. Not what it once was patches ago, but still pretty good. I mean, that with a false promise is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. He's even getting double that regen. <laughs> it will feel like near impossible to kill him, and he's getting all that life's, or, uh, life steal from his spells and such. He is a Goliath. See his net worth, though. It, it just still doesn't have that old Alchemist feel where it's like, man, he's 24k net worth. Yeah, he's unkillable. He can take any fight he wants. It still feels like he has to play very cautiously. Yeah. And not get caught out. The Anexicism could ruin his day. I think part of that is EG didn't have any four staffs until now. They've got a way out of the Clockwork Cogs with TZ picking that up. I think I kind of expected maybe for him to pick it up a bit earlier, but he did prioritize those other Veil, Solar Crest, Common Veno items. Yeah, the extra mobility is going to be nice, and uh, if he's not picking it up, I don't know anyone else who is, because lots of the farm is already being gobbled up by the mighty Sumail and some of the other cores here. Yeah. Keep coming together now, still eyeballing this Roche pit. It's up now, so tension will be on this Roche. Oh, Obviously, yeah. Clutch will want to contest it. By now, they have that exorcism back up and ready to go. I don't know. Jack, what do you think? What would be Clutch Gamer's best approach to this kind of situation now when Roche is going to be a priority for both sides? Um, I think, well, look, as we see some deep wards there by Clutch Gamers, I think that they need to go back to trying to get these uh, pickoffs. I think you have the, you get the lanes pushed out, um, whether Sand King Clock or Weaver can do that and have to look for these kind of pickoffs. I think they have to try to restrict EG space a little bit. I thought EG would try to start deathballing now with the Alchemist, who's, as you mentioned, very difficult to bring down, especially with an Oracle, but they still, I guess, don't feel entirely comfortable doing that, so this next Aegis is going to be huge, and one way to stop that or forestall it is, to, again, to keep the waves pushed, keep the pressure there, make your enemy reveal themselves and look for pickoffs. So otherwise, uh, you know, giving up this Roche looks really bad into, for them. Like, I'm not sure they would be able to last much longer if they did give up that Roche on. Yep. Well, they... EG are going to smoke up. They had some vision from Plague Wards. They Ooh. got deleted, but here they go. They are coming in from the low ground, though. Gabby could scoot in. He does manage to get just a brief glimpse of Zai. Frantically pings it out. The I think rest they're going to wait this Rocket Flare out. Yeah, they, they wait the Rocket Flare to expire, and then they start on Roche. They've got like a five-second window between Rocket Flares. Oh, my God. Look how fast they do it, though. There is no chance they're going to be able to make it in there in time. But Clock says, I can get in there. Jumps in right away. On. He dies right away. But can they still make their way in somehow? No, it looks like Sumail will be able to chop his way through it, grabs up the Aegis, they put all their focus onto Arteezy, but then Universe steps in, gets a nice two-man chrono onto Clutch, and will be able to set up a couple of easy takedowns. Three gonna get dropped now, and Aegis claimed, EG looking to just take it home down the mid lane. So there is a uh, four-second window between Rocket Flare cooldown and the vision it gives. And in that four seconds, EG got Roche down to about 25%. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, Fly's dead. Woo! Okay. He it's got squished <laughs> like a fly. This is like game one, you know? that we Suddenly, we're just like talking about whatever's going on, and then suddenly EG just have Over. one crazy fight, and boom, game ended. The zero to 60 moment all of a sudden there from EG. Like zero to 100. It's crazy. The Nas turned on. Wow, indeed. Gabby yeah, can't even believe it. What the hell happened? We're out of the tournament? Yeah, guys. <laughs> Sorry. EG came in today, fired up and ready to play. I know Clutch got the best of them in the round robin, but this time EG are not pulling out any sort of ancient apparitions. 
The clutch BDG in the round robin, damn. That is impressive. Okay, skittish out here. It looks like this could be the final de defensive hurrah for Clutch, but they've already lost their Sand King. No Epi going to be in this one. Sumail simply had chopped up the little Scorpion. Looks to go for the Clockwork next. Rappi has to step away. Clutch simply fighting out their last moments of the tournament here. Oh, he tried to Manta off the stun, the stun on that one. Couldn't quite get it, but Sumail alone can bully back all of Clutch here while the rest of EG can step off. But they got to be feeling pretty good. It looks like EG will be able to move on and into the next round. And if I'm not mistaken, from what they were talking about earlier today, they don't flip the bracket in that first round. So that means OG are going to be going against EG next. That's hype. Woo. That's where EG starting in the lower bracket like completely changes the dynamic because I'd say EG is even despite being fifth in the group stage very clearly like top two top three that I'd say like EG LGD and OG look like the three best teams EG just through some weird head-to-head -head rules ended up in the lower bracket despite finishing tied second in score okay well I don't want to speak too soon clutch did manage to hold that top lane EG stepped off went for the shrine and now they're gonna be able to jump onto Sumail he gets hit with the false promise, but this is not with his ulti. He didn't even try to pop it. He just knows that his Aegis is going to be there for him, and he might look to fight it out for his second life. Gabby trying to move him for the rest of them, but now they're hitting him up with the Burrow, with the Epi. He's trying to waltz his way through it. He even mantis it out, but can he still survive? Yes! All of his life now returning as he's able to walk away free. Now looking to return into action, Clutch Gamers. Oh boy, what have we gotten ourselves into now? Sumail's back and he just quickly just <laughs> knocks down two, gets a double kill, and just crushes the hopes of CG. Now now he's pulling some eggs. Although Arteezy got fed up, he bought his own. He's like, all right, you're not going to give me an eggs, I'll buy one. <laughs> Freaking Sumail, always making me support him. But uh, EG, uh, at this point, I think we can safely say they are through to the next round to verse. OG of all teams. Yeah, really. One of, those, one of those two teams is going to get eliminated in the next round. Both uh, prominence and favorites, even at TI, but uh, this is going to be some good stuff. Chinese teams are going to be happy to see that. Uh, the, the two big bad uh, yeah. wolves coming over, um, the, the granddaddies, as they, as they might call them, coming over, and uh, you know, one of them will be eliminated <laughs> if that's the case. One and the Chinese teams don't, normally it's the Chinese teams, like the, you know, the, it's up to them. Like, you got to knock out EG, you got to knock out OG, you got to beat these Western teams, but this time they'll. The Western teams will be put head to head with each other, so perhaps a sigh of relief from some of the the other teams of the tournament that they may not have to go up, go up against either EG or OG. Congratulations to EG Clutch Gamers. I mean, we were talking about it a bit at the start of this game, at the start of the series. You know, we don't know what to expect from them moving forward. They did already have that huge moment, you know, momentum period. You know, taking out a bunch of the qualifiers, uh, some of them not able to attend the event due to some unfortunate visa issues, some of them attending and falling just a bit short, but the kids have potential. And uh, I would hope this is not going to be the last time we're going to be seeing a lot of them. Yeah, I think we'll see more of the players. Well, who knows where they stick together. That's something I can really speculate on. It does feel like after this many tournaments uh, and nothing working out, they may change a player or two. Who knows? There's a lot of skill. Uh, we've seen Gabby make some really flashy big plays on mm -hmm. past teams on this team when he played with Execration as well. I think Armel's maybe one of the standout players. He's fantastic uh, on that mid roll, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, like I think they they lane fairly well, but I think some of the team fight decisions mid game when to take fights, uh, those things could definitely be sharper. And then thinking about teams that say don't make it to TI and end up staying together fully intact. There's a really one notable example that comes to mind right now. It's IGV uh, because they didn't qualify for TI last year. They had basically the same roster that they kept afterwards. Um, so, you know, they they and that's worked out for them this year. Ultimately, they haven't done so well on land, but they're going to be once again at TI. So uh, teams looking to stay together, that's kind of a different approach to things. So I'm not sure uh, if CG will go in that direction. And for EG, I guess, I guess kind of taking care of business here in the yep. lower bracket. The tough match comes next. Doing their thing. Yep. We'll see what they do and how they fare against OG. That match should be happening tomorrow. Today, though, we still have one more best of three ahead of us, gentlemen. We are going to be going further down that lower bracket in a matchup of LFY. Um, what is it? IGVG. IGVG. Yeah. IG, yeah. IG, yep. The IG, Emperor VG. against right. the Prince and the other meme-worthy. We'll get to that. You'll have to fill us in, Jack. Oh, 
We have Chinese some lore. Jack China memes coming at you after this break, but we are going to cut to a break. Gods, Jack, and myself, we will be back with more of Beyond the Summit's English coverage of the Mars TV League. Dota 2. <laughs>